How's it going everybody? Chaotic Meatball here and welcome back to another Fire at Leaf Green 386 challenge. So after Cleffa, I was thinking, oh hey, Eggleypuff is basically the same Pokemon but for the Wigglytuff line, but I couldn't have been further from the truth. Eggleybuff stats are absolute trash other than the base 90 HP, which is pretty high, having a pitiful base 15 speed and defense, base 20 special defense, base 30 attack, and an admittedly okay base 40 special attack for a baby Pokemon. But this is pretty standard. However, the reason Igglybuff is miles worse than Cleffa is due to the fact that Igglybuff does not get a super effective attack for the first two gyms, so no magical leaf spam. So all we have to work with is Pound for Brock. Oh yeah, we don't even get Pound until level 9, so we'll have to use Struggle for training from level 5 to level 9. At least we have a decent TM selection though, very similar to Cleffa's, again with no Ice-type move. I don't even have access to Rock-types. Even Togepi has access to Ancient Power and can get Omni Boost, but hey, we'll work with what we've got. I just don't have any hope that Igglybuff will be better than D-tier. Anyway, before we get into the battles themselves, I want to let you guys know that the unsubbed to subbed ratio of viewers of the channel has gone from 83% at the beginning of the month down to 78% now. I mentioned it in the last two videos and I would figured I'd mention it again and make it a drive for that number to go down to 60% by the end of September. Maybe even hit 50,000 subscribers? Hmm? Huh? Who knows? It's up to you. Anyway, the lab rival battle is absolutely terrible, since it goes for so long in my efforts to try to struggle, using charm to lower its attack, sing to get it to sleep, and defense scroll to increase my defense, but even after having gotten it to minus 6 attack and plus 6 defense, it still did 2 damage per tackle. Yeah, we have trash defense, so it KOs me and we move on, so I just tried to get to the Viridian Forest as fast as possible. I'd gotten a few antidotes and potions so that I can counter some Kankunas and Metapods to waste PP against. It only has 30 PP in Harden, but Defense Scroll has 40, Sing has 15, and Charm has 20. So I had to face off against three of the Cocoon Pokemon before running away and beginning to struggle inside of the forest. I had plenty of potions to get me to level 9 for Pound, but we're still nowhere near done. I actually went back to Route 1 to Eevee Train in Speed, and Route 22 to Eevee Train in Attack against the Mankey in the area. I actually performed the big brain strat here too and grabbed the Spearow for the HM Mule trade later on, eventually getting Sweet Kiss at level 14. This will allow me to confuse Brock's Pokemon, which will at least let me set up my status moves a little bit easier, and then to level 16 to cap off before facing Brock. This took about an hour to do, mostly because Igglybuff is weak, but it's made up by being in the fast EXP group meaning it only needs 800,000 EXP to get to level 100, and takes less EXP for each level, so this is able to offset whatever time sync I put in here, I'm sure. But I figured level 16 would give me enough HP to withstand a few attacks, since I wanted to go for Sweet Kiss and set up both Charm and Defense Scroll to make it as painless as possible, while Pound does one point of damage per hit. Of course, disregarding critical hits. Speaking of critical hits, Brock's not too bad since I actually got one in the fight against Geodude. He leads with it, so I go ahead and use Sweet Kiss, confusing it and getting him to hit itself on the first attempt, so I just went for Charm next turn as it went for Defense Girl. But it had already snapped out of confusion, so I did it again, then went for Charm again until it was as low as it could go. Of course, Geodude ends up snapping out of confusion again and hitting a few tackles, but Igglybuff's cute Charm ability activated, giving me yet another layer of protection, so then I started going for Defense Girl to max out my defense before Onyx. I can't do anything else from here, so I just went for Pound over and over again, getting a crit before taking it out. Alright, Onyx time. It outspeeds and crits with Tackle immediately, but Cute Charm activated immediately as well, the best case scenario I guess. Since Confusion takes priority over Infatuation, I basically just spammed Sweet Kiss throughout the battle intermixed with Pound, though he started going for Bind, which scared me since it does residual damage, regardless of my stat changes, so we were neck and neck in HP but I managed to eke him out just barely, KOing it with only 6 HP remaining. I'm honestly shocked that Igglybuff didn't need to be level 20 or higher for that battle, but hey, Confusion is quite nice along with Infatuation. So next up is Mount Moon, and since I spent a lot of money on potions and antidotes, so I barely had enough for repels, but I managed to get through without having to deal with a bunch of wild Pokemon. 
I actually skipped a few trainers in here, mainly the scientist that has Magnemite, since I don't have a good way of handling steel types, as there's really no need to, since it's not really present outside of a few more Magnemites and Magnetons we'll see throughout the rest of the game. On the way though, I grabbed the Dome Fossil. I'm going to be doing a coin flip for all of these runs, and if I get heads, I'll take the Dome Fossil, but if I get tails, I'll get the Helix Fossil. I actually did some retroactive coin flips for the last 10 runs, where I got 6 heads and 4 tails, meaning the Dome Fossil is in the lead from 7 to 4. Hmm, I wonder if Lord Helix will be able to surpass the Dome. Anyway, I got over to Route 4, and finally, I am allowed to have a decent attack. I taught Mega Punch over Defense Curl since I'd rather keep the move that lowers a stat by two stages rather than raising my own by one. I probably would have kept Defense Curl if I had access to Rollout, but because I don't, I figured I'd just get rid of it. Anyway, on to Cerulean City, and I figured I'd just move into Misty's Gym and take out her trainers with And sure enough, it was pretty easy. I'm at level 25 before Misty, so I figured I'd be able to do it before heading up to take on the rival especially since Igglybuff can take advantage of that Water Pulse TM that Misty provides. So, she's a bit more of a priority. I took a few attempts, got destroyed thanks to Starmie's Water Pulse, but on the fourth attempt I managed to hit Sweet Kiss and not take any damage from Staryu, taking it out with Mega Punch and getting to Starmie. I'm able to endure two Water Pulses, but I confused it and only got hit with one of them before taking it out and a few Confusion Hits and two Mega Punches. Misty's never really too bad, and I've been definitely finding it a bit easier to just take her out before Rival 2. Though Rival 2 is not even too bad either, as Pidgeotto only hit two quick attacks as I took it down with two Mega Punches, and the rest of his team went down to a Mega Punch apiece, aside from Bulbasaur who took two. Now the run's starting to roll well, so I took out the Nugget Bridge and gave Igglybuff the TM for Water Pulse since there's a few hikers on Route 25 that I can make a lot easier thanks to this grabbing the SS ticket from Bill in the process, and moving onward to Vermilion City. There's not much here other than the bike voucher and trade from my HM Farfetch'd, so the SSN awaits. I actually skipped Route 11 this time because I decided I wanted to catch up on time, even though that was kind of a fruitless endeavor for something like Igglybuff. I just wish I could get the TM for Body Slam on the SSN like you can in Generation 1. That would be so nice for something rather than Mega Punch, which is kind of inaccurate and doesn't provide paralysis. But I've got to work with what's given to me. Rival 3 is not too bad with the moves I have, as he leads with Pidgeotto, and I am able to one-shot it with Mega Punch after a sand attack, leading to Raticate. It's a one-shot as well, as is Kadabra after missing a Disable, leaving just Ivysaur, barely surviving a Mega Punch before putting me to sleep, and just whittling me down before I wake up at 39 HP. Finishing with Pound so I wouldn't have to risk the accuracy. After grabbing Cut though, it's Surge time, baby, and he's not actually too bad since I have to stab Mega Punch, as has been the case for a few of these runs. Voltorb's out first, Mega Punch by, Pikachu's out second, Mega Punch by, Raichu's out third, Mega Punch, Water Pulse, Mega Punch. I said Mega Punch. Dang it, I said Mega Punch! Bye. Gotta love paralysis and evasion cheese being used against me. I was a bit closer than I would have wanted. I admit I was being a little bit careless going for Water Pulse after having gotten Raichu into the red. I should have just gone for another Mega Punch, but whatever, I won anyway. And now it's time for the long stretch between the third and fourth badge. I complain about the pacing in other Pokemon games, but Kanto is off the charts since you have to go through the likes of Route 9, Rock Tunnel, Route 10, Lavender Town, of course grabbing the Return TM and taking out the available trainers on Route 12 is a bit of a boost EXP, and back up into Route 8 before getting to the next city with a gym badge. I managed to jump from level 37 at the beginning of that trek to level 45, which is insane since I really didn't think it was that big of a chunk, but I guess it is. <laughs> I try to occasionally skip trainers too, but since there's not really much between every gym once you get to Erica, you kinda have to take what you can get, as is what has become the motto for this video, I guess. I actually decided to just go for Erica's gym before the rocket hideout, since I was already in the mid-level 40s, like I said. So I just slapped a cherry berry on Igglybuff and went to town with Return, literally sweeping her team. <laughs> two returns on Victory Bell, two returns on Tangela, and one critical return on Fileplume for the victory. I've never found Erica to be a problem as long as I end up picking up at least one cherry berry before her gym, so this ended up being no different, and I don't see it being any different until we get to Wooper, 
but that's quite a few runs away. However, I ended up being a dunce and cleared out Pokemon Tower before the Rocket Hideout, which wasted a little bit of time, but that's not that big of a deal since I have Escape Ropes and Repels, but that entails a rival battle, so let's go over that. I swept my rival with Iglybuff's return, not even taking half damage before his Ivysaur ended up putting me to sleep, but I took that out too, winning me the fight. Yeah, really not that eventful, was it? But I'm really loving this high HP stat. Jumping over back to the Brocket hideout is the fight against Giovanni, and he's really easy, as he usually is, since I can easily water pulse his Onix and Rhyhorn, leaving just his Kangaskhan, which is a two-shot with return, only using Bite and Tail Whip, since he was just at the point of no return at that point. He knew he was going to lose, so he said, screw it, I don't care, here's your money, tell me when you need me again to give you more money. This lets me rescue Mr. Fuji and get the Poke Flute, giving me access to yet another large stretch of the game. Of course, I can technically challenge Koga whenever I want and face minimal trainers, but I really do enjoy going through the trainers in Stilfco, Cycling Road, and Routes 12 through 15 before heading in there. Fun fact, did you know that you could hold B while on the Cycling Road and you can stop? I always thought you were perpetually moving downhill. But there's a hidden power point up and max elixir on this road that I have had so much trouble getting before, but now I can get it with ease. I can't believe I didn't know about it before this run. Shows you what I know about Pokemon. Oh well, at least I can redeem myself against Koga. I figured he'd be really easy in this run since I grabbed the TM for Psychic from Saffron City back when I was taking out the Stealth Company, which ended up being the perfect choice. He leads with a coughing, which is a one shot. Muck is a two-shot after using Minimize, the second coughing's a one-shot, and the Weezing is the only remotely threatening Pokemon, and oh wait, it was a one-shot, getting me to level 69. Nice. And getting me the Soul Badge. The TM selection is really nice, I must admit, but I have a problem with some of these TMs being only available once throughout the entire game, so I have to wisely use stuff like Shockwave and Psychic, but then I can get unlimited copies of Shadow Ball and Flamethrower. Granted, if I have the money to do it, but they're still technically unlimited thanks to the VS Seeker here in the remakes, and I find those to be a bit more overpowered than stuff like Shockwave and Water Pulse, so, eh, what's the deal? Surprisingly enough, I'm able to go ahead and challenge Rival 5 instead of heading to Cinnabar first, winning in three attempts. I technically could have given Iglybuff the TM for Shockwave for this fight, since my rival is both Pidgeot and Gyarados but Return really packs enough of a punch to handle both of them, so I just figured I'd save it until absolutely necessary, since it's one of those TMs, like I said, that I can only get once. Pidgeot is a one-shot with Return, leading to Intimidate from Gyarados, so I went for Psychic to see how much damage it would do, barely doing less than half, so I just went for Return, still managing to finish it off after that Intimidate. Not gonna lie, I didn't expect it to do more than Psychic, but even with 10 less physical attack in the base stat, Stab and 12 more power than Psychic, as well as Gyarados having a base 79 defense, compared to his base 100 special defense, Return does more. I'll keep this in mind for later, though Shockwave would still do more thanks to that quad effectiveness. Anyway, third is Growlithe, Water Pulse by, Alakazam's fourth and he uses Reflect so I can't one shot, but I can two shot, so yippee, but leaving just Venusaur, who I outspeed and hit Psychic, but is Razor Leaf Man. That Razor Leaf did a boatload of damage, jeez. I know it's a crit, but I finished it next turn, but still, yowie wowie, that's a lot of friggin' damage. Straight after is Giovanni, and he's not a problem, since Psychic and Water Pulse practically covers his whole team, as Psychic is a one-shot on Nidorino, and a two-shot on Nidoqueen, returns a two-shot on Kangaskhan, and Rhyhorn's a one-shot with Water Pulse, winning me the fight, even though I was poisoned. He still manages to make terrible decisions on the tax, as Giovanni does a lot. Seriously, for a crime boss, you'd think he would have better AI. Anyway, let's take it back to the last three gym leaders back to back, starting with Sabrina. She's, of course, unable to survive return very well, so I'm able to one-shot Kadabra, Mr. Mime, and Venomoth before finally getting to Alakazam, using a single Calm Mind before going down as well, winning me the badge. Blaine's up next, and he's not difficult either, since I'm able to use Water Pulse, one-shotting Growlithe and Ponyta before leading to his Rapidash. It lands Fire Blast for about a third HP, but I did enough for him to use a Hyper Potion, so I just did that twice more before he landed one more, leaving just Arcanine, who's a one-shot with a critical. 
Definitely would have lost that if it wasn't for that crit, but we take it here at House Meatball. My strategy for this fight was literally just a bait for Fire Blast misses, since it's 85% accurate and pretty notorious to miss, especially among human players. But the critical serves the same function to provide me a win, so I'm not worried about it. Last up is Giovanni, which is simple thanks to my moveset, one-shotting Rhyhorn with Water Pulse, nearly KOing with Psychic on Nidoqueen before getting hit with Earthquake. He healed before I ended up getting the one-shot range, leading to Nidoking, also going down to a one-shot Psychic. Fourth is Doug Trio, so it was just a one-shot with Water Pulse, leaving a second Rhyhorn, which again was a one-shot. I just need to ask, where the heck did Giovanni get the additional Moonstone during his brief time before our Sylph Company fight and now? Like, I imagine him just briskly jogging to the gym because he knows I'm right on his tail, and he just stubs his toe on it and uses it while jogging. Why the heck do I think of these things? Who knows, I probably would be called a completely normal meatball if I didn't come up with these things. Anyway, let's get to those hard battles, the first of which being Rival 6. I finally gave the TM for Shockwave to Iggly Buff so I could hit Pidgeot for a two-shot, Though it was infatuated on the first turn, it hit me, so I got away with only getting hit once before taking it out. Rhyhorn's a one-shot with Water Pulse, leading to Gyarados, who's a one-shot with Shockwave. I guess a base 100 special defense really can't stand up to a level gap and quad weakness. Fourth out is Growlithe, so I hit it with Water Pulse for the one-shot, leading to Alakazam. It didn't hit me with a single thing, only getting off a Calm Mind and missing a Disable before going down to return in Shockwave, leaving just Venusaur, going down to a Critical Psychic. I'm decently surprised that this battle was that easy, but when you have something that's super effective against five of his six Pokemon, this was pretty helpful. So, one victory road later, and let's get into those League battles. Well, not before one more thing. I was doing some grinding, and I figured I'd go ahead and capture a Meowth for pickup so I could see what my hidden power type was. I wanted to basically see if I had either Ice or Dragon, since I didn't have access to anything to hit Lance's Dragonite for a good super effective damage. So I tested it, and sure enough, I ended up getting the Ice type. Pretty lucky, all things considered, since I really didn't reset for that. Heck, I didn't even reset for nature or anything this time, so yeah, definitely lucky. Anyway, let's get into this. Lorelai's not too bad, leading with Dugong. So, I went for Return as she went for Safeguard, letting me finish it off scot-free, leaning to Cloister, which, again, pitiful special defense, one shot with Shockwave. Third is Slowbro, being a one shot with a critical return, leading to Lapras. It's tough, eh, so I'm sure Oak, that's a crit too, wowie, leaving just Jinx, a two shot with return, thanks to my Chesto Berry waking me up. I didn't take a single point of damage in that match. Mind you, that was my 12th attempt, so clearly it was a fluke, but I didn't care. Let's keep going. Damageless Elite 4? Bruno's actually not too bad either, with him only taking a few attempts before I took him down because of Psychic and Water Pulse being great for his entire team. Onyx is out first, so I hit it with a one-shot Water Pulse. Then I hit a Psychic on Hitmonchan, getting the special defense drop as he missed with Rock Tomb, so he healed, giving me an easy one-shot leaning to Hitmonlee. It landed a Brick Break, doing over 200 damage as I nailed a Psychic, but he missed next turn with Mega Kick, allowing me to KO with another Psychic, leading to the last threat, Machamp. Sure enough, Psychic is a two-shot after he missed with Cross Chop, leaving just his last Onyx to go down to Water Pulse, winning me the match. Two down, three to go. Agatha's actually pretty easy since all of her Pokemon are Poison type. I have Psychic, but since most of them are also Ghost type, they can't use their best attack since I'm immune, leading to a one-shot on Gengar, Golbat, and your one-shot on Arbok after getting hit with a Sludge Bomb and getting the high roll on it after healing, Gengar number two is a two-shot, and Haunter is a one-shot after going for Mean Look, winning me the fight very easily. This league is falling pretty quickly. How the heck is this baby Pokemon good? Like, come on. People usually do challenges with teams of baby Pokemon because they complain of how bad they are, but they're really not that bad. Anyway, Lance is still a brick wall though, because Lance usually is, and the fact that I really didn't know what to replace for Hidden Power Ice, debating between Psychic, Water Pulse, or Shockwave. I opted for getting rid of Water Pulse, since it was the least helpful move at this point, since the remainder of the Pokemon can be beat with relative competence, aside from Blue's Arcanine, or Rival's Arcanine, or whatever the heck we called him this run, I don't even remember. So I did that and went in, and after about 15 attempts, I finally managed to take him down. 
He leads with Gyarados, an easy one-shot thanks to Shockwave, only getting hit with the light bite, but Intimidate is still very bad for me. Next out is Aerodactyl, so I went for Shockwave, leading to Cute Charm activating on his first H in power, negating his turn as I finished it with a second Shockwave, leading to his Dragonite. Alright, Hidden Power, time to help me up, and do... Oh lord, that's not even half. Not good. Well, which was good was Dragonite missing Hyper Beam and using Safeguard, which led to the Citrus Berry, putting him in range for me to KO in a third Hidden Power, with him somehow missing a second Hyper Beam, leaving just his last two Dragonairs. Yeah, I know Hyper Beam's a 90% accurate move, but hitting two 10% chances in a row is like getting poison off of Poison Sting in two Pokemon in a row. But that's not that hard, I guess. Leaving just his two Dragonairs here, though. So the first one went down to two Hidden Powers after hitting a single Outrage, but the second one paralyzed me, hitting a Hyper Beam and leaving me with six HP allowing me to finish it off with two more hidden powers thanks to his recovery turn, winning me the fight. Alright, I guess it's not a league battle without a crazy win, but I think we're in the clear since the champion really isn't bad, especially with the help of the Quick Claw that we got in the Safari Zone. It's like the only item you pick up throughout the entire adventure, since I think you have to use Thief on several other Pokemon to get your things that actually boost uh, type advantage, like Miracle Seed, Charcoal, Mystic Water, Twisted Spoon, etc, etc. I've never done that in a run, mostly because most of the Pokemon that I have don't really get Thief because of the fact that A, the TM is garbage, and B, I didn't want to waste time looking for him. But enough of a diatribe, it's time for the champion. First up is Pidgeot, a one-shot thanks to a nicely placed critical, leading to Alakazam, where I think the Quick Claw popped, since it was a one-shot. Third out is Rhydon, so I decided to replace Hidden Power with Solar Beam before the battle, taking it out after he missed with Rock Tomb, putting me over three Pokemon without any damage. Next out is Gyarados, hitting a single Dragon Rage as I hit a Shockwave, leading to a Chain of Healing, eventually leading to me outspeeding and finishing it off after he ran out of full restores, leading to Arcanine. Now this is where I wish I kept Water Pulse, since I basically need either a Special Defense Drop with Psychic and a Quick Claw Pop, or a Critical Return for this to work out. You want to know how many attempts this took for this to happen? 43. I deserve this Critical, say goodbye Arcanine, leaving just as Venusaur. I went for Psychic as he went for Solar Beam, sadly going faster, but my Quick Claw popped! allowing Igglybuff to outspeed and win me the match, beating the game at level 94. Definitely great for a baby Pokemon, but the fact that I needed that much luck for some of those later battles definitely tells me I should have leveled a few more times before going in. But hey, I did it nonetheless. Of course, the Elite Four Round 2 ended up being a double team fun fest, so I'm not going to waste your time. But let's look at the leaderboards so that we have both the Round 1 and Round 2 times on screen. And yeah, I'm not too shocked about a C rank, pretty average, but I'm going to be doing a hell of a challenge next time when I take on the game with Togepi. Believe me, I'm going to be crying throughout that one, like, the whole time. See you guys then. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as a reminder, if you're still here, be sure to hit that subscribe button so that we can get the non-subbed viewership percentage from 80% to 60% by the end of the month. And while you're at it, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button and turn on notifications so that you'll be shown when these videos are going live and when premieres are going down, since I'd love to chat with you guys while we watch the run together. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you next time.